Hello YouTube and Mr. Forks. Uh, today we're going to be taking a look at sound inside of Final Cut Pro 10. Now I'm just going to be going over a few features but there are many sound related tools within inside um, Final Cut Pro 10. For instance if we go over to our sound and media browser we just click this button here um, you can see that there's loads of preset sound effects um, the top option here is Final Cut Pro sound effects. They're also then divided into sections. And you can see that we can just click on one and press space bar. Give it a little preview. And if you don't actually have these installed, what you need to do is you need to go to Final Cut Pro, download additional content, and uh, it will launch software update and uh, download the content for you. But here, the first thing I'm going to talk about is actual sound settings. You can see at the moment that this is actually a surround sound project. There's a few ways we can uh, discover this. One at the bottom, uh, this bar at the bottom here tells you the settings of your project. You can see that it's a 1080p HD project, uh, 25 frames a second in surround sound. When you press play, you can see a uh, sound gauge here, this uh, green bar going up and down, that represents the center speaker of our surround sound project. If we actually uh, just click there, you can see we've now actually got sound levels over here in the side, and they work as this one does. Now this is a really nice, accessible, easy to look at uh, sound levels. If your sound levels are too high, you will see some red. You can see that we've now got red here. And that red indicator is telling us that we've actually broken the sound level and it is actually too loud. I know sometimes you may want uh, some really loud bits, which is fine. Yellow is fine. You can see if we just zoom in here, we've got some yellow peaks to our audio. That is cool. Um, but don't compensate for bad audio levels by making something ridiculously loud, just make everything else quieter and you can generally do that by reducing the master volume of the audio in the sound mixer but we're not going to be looking at the sound mixer today. Now whilst this is all well and good having surround sound, there is a fundamental problem with this and that is Final Cut Pro works great on iMacs, MacBook Pros, that is the target audience really. So these computers don't actually have a way of live of having live surround sound playback so such a surround sound functionality feature is kind of redundant in that sense so I would recommend changing your project settings to stereo and the way you do that is you can go back to the projects library or you can just press command J and if we load up our inspector just press this button here you can see that we've now got the properties for our project. It tells us it's surround, it tells us a bit of information here when it was created, what it's called. You can even see how many clips are being used. We're just going to press the modify project properties button and this is going to give us the dialog it gave us when it opened the project. And we can very simply change the audio channels to stereo. And when we press OK you're going to see that the actual sound gauge changes. We've now only got two bars on here over here and over here. If we just double click on our project just to go back into the storyline. Uh, now when we press play we can see that this mono track is now occupying these two left and right speakers as opposed to just the center speaker. For most of you I imagine you're exporting to the web or DVD so this is going to give you real good playback and all of the Macintosh computers are they all have stereo speakers so you are going to get real playback and feedback and be able to hear what your project will sound like and I would strongly recommend before you export your final project to actually just try out listening to just listen to your film or your video through loads of different mediums whether that involves just burning a DVD or a CD and playing it through your car speakers put it on your headphones just to check out that you are actually getting good quality sound and it's not just your speakers that are pretending and lying to you about how good your sound is or how bad it is and all that. So when we've actually got an audio file you can see that I've actually got loads of dots here and what they are they're actually keyframes there's a few ways to add keyframes the most simple way is the way that I would strongly advise you all get used to using and that is simply holding down alt 
and then you can click on this line as many times as you want and this sets keyframes. Now these keyframes frame, all represent the volume. You can see that if we drag in between this keyframe and this keyframe we can bring that whole level down and it's going to drag down these two keyframes and then it's going to create a curve between the outer keyframes. The reason you want to be adjusting as you go along is obviously there may be some bits where you have a dialogue so you want to reduce the sound of the, the volume of the music and you just want to temporarily lower it to so set a couple of keyframes, lower the speed. You can also lower one keyframe at a time as opposed to grabbing the bar. Um, this is fine. Now what is cool about Final Cut Pro is that it is giving you a real-time response in terms of waveforms. You can actually see how loud it is. You can see that we've actually got some red here now so we know that that is too loud. And depending on how loud we want it to be, if we want it to be loud, you can see we're starting to peak some yellow. So that is letting us know that we're actually creating a loud sound. Whereas I want it to be more of an ambient sound. So anything about midway is nice. Over here, you can see we're starting to peak some yellow. And that's because I wanted an impact. When this cuts in, you can see that this lap bit of loud volume is cool. Well, it might not be cool, but it's what is intended, if that makes sense. When you're editing audio on video clips, the simplest way to do that is simply to double click on the video audio jack. From here you can extend the audio and this allows you to edit it independently from the video clip and when you double click, click again it's going to appear to have undone the changes you just made. However, this is not the case and it is remembering everything you do. If you drag from the top of the audio waveform, you can create a really quick crossfade, and this basically means the audio will be fading in and out. The same with any new audio tracks you bring in. You can see I'm creating a crossfade. This is a really quick way to work, and it differs to the old way in uh, Final Cut Pro 7 when you used to have to create two keyframes and create a manual fade like that. So this is really nice and simple. If we just close up that audio, you can see that we can obviously overlap all of these and you can even open multiple audio tracks at the same time. Maybe three, two is a limit. I'm confident that I managed to get three open earlier. Ah, that's because I've actually collapsed the audio in this case. Now what that means is you can take an audio file from a video clip and make it a completely separate clip. That is why we can access it. If you right click, you can see that we've actually got a few options here. What you want to do is press detach audio and that would simply separate the audio into a new separate audio file and you can drag this around, make it completely independent you can even have audio layers on a video track and then it will just play black when it's uh, over the top there. Whenever you move audio you can see that it's making a connection. Now what that means is that it's always going to stay connected to its relevant video piece. In this case we want it simply to be connected to this and everything moves out the way. It's that's the magnetic timeline for you. It's, it's cool um, and very useful. However we don't actually want it to be completely separate, we want to keep it within our video. But having it separate does have its advantages. You may just want the uh, audio, so that will allow you to quickly separate it. The last thing I'm going to take a look at is if we go to the audio inspector panel, you can see that there is an audio analysis feature. If we just click this arrow, this is kind of like the uh, audio version of the color corrector, if you were. Uh, and we can actually make some changes to this. If we just turn on these some of these features, we can manually adjust them. It's got some really nice default tasks that many people have to perform. One of them is noise removal. This is a really cool uh, feature. And the other one is hum removal. This is often uh, just kind of like an interference thing. When you get a hum from like a microphone, you can also increase the loudness. 
but uh, we don't want to do that because we've manually adjusted everything. And there's also no harm. I lied to you. But the feature's there, but there's no harm in this clip. This is actually a very nice soundtrack from Christopher Hansen, who does some composing for my films. And so that is basically how you work with audio clips in Final Cut Pro. In a later tutorial, I'm going to go over uh, keywords inside the events library. You can see that I've created um, a, soundtrack, a soundtrack keyword library. And in here is some songs. And I can just choose a portion of it and then drag this into my timeline. And you can see that it is trying to automatically create a link. You can see that green bar. Um, to a video clip and then you can see we've now layered up some audio now we, like before we can very quickly correct crossfades and there is a uh, mini menu available here where it allows us to dive straight into our inspector panel if it were not open um, so that's the basics of audio editing, what you're going to be doing, how they link with video and project settings. So I hope this was somewhat insightful. Let me know if you enjoyed it. Well, can you? Yeah, tutorials can be enjoying, I guess. I'm going to try and throw in a few more jokes, maybe. Um, no, I don't know any jokes, but uh, oh well. So I'll see you guys soon. Thank you for watching.